Hey everyone, here's what's on the agenda this week. We're going to be putting a balance along here, above both doors, the back door as well. We're not sure yet how we're going to attach the one along the back. We're just going to kind of figure that one out as we go. We're also going to put trim along this edge and hopefully get the trim up along here. We're a little worried about what we're going to do in this corner. We can't get in the way of being able to open this cabinet up. So We're also going to be working on this bottom bathroom drawer, which we have more dividers and things we want to put in there. So we'll show you that a little bit later. So we started installing the struts and one thing we realized we couldn't go by the instructions that they gave. Um, they called from the edge of the top of the front door to be 2.3 inches but when we did that it bound up and it actually wouldn't close. So I had a measure from this top edge one and seven eighths inch. I had to play with it a little bit to figure out what that dimension was to get it to work but this one works really good now and it holds it up nice. It doesn't bind or anything and then I'm going to go ahead and install this other one. So I'm coming one and seven eighths down from the from the top of the, the front door. And then I want this um, edge here to be three quarter inches is what I figured it needed to be for it to work properly. So I'm just gonna measure three quarter inches in. And that's where this back edge needs to be. So right in there somewhere. And then they give you a lot of play on these to adjust it back and forth. So if you don't get it exact, you can you can slide it to get it in the right spot so the door opens and closes properly and holds up properly. And then for the part that goes on the bottom, I put it as low as it can go and in about three quarters of an inch from the edge. And that seemed to work. So the strut mounts are installed. Just put the door back in. And then I found it easier to attach the bottom one first. Because you gotta compress this a little bit. Get the top one on. That's it. We've done a number of things since our last video. We added the struts that hold the cabinets up here. We also added these pins that go down here because even though we have magnets on this refrigerator drawer when we hit bumps and things in the road it does come open so we thought the easiest thing and most secure way of making sure it's not going to slam open is to put these on these this is just rigging for kayaks that hold like the the ropes i forget what they're actually called uh, but I'll put a link in the description if anyone's interested in looking them up. It worked really well for this purpose. These metal plates down here, Kevin just kind of fabricated out of leftover L bracket that he had and then painted them. And they're held on with screws. And of course he had to drill the hole in the floor, which was scary, but it worked out good. And so these just slide right in here. And the only time they'll be in there is when I'm driving. Um, otherwise, I'll just throw them out of the way somewhere. And that's going to be really secure. I mean, it just, 
it's terrible. So, the other thing I did was finish hemming that screen that I started in the last video. And I intentionally left it a few inches long because I thought, well, that'll make it harder for bugs to get in from underneath. And also, I, if, if it's really windy, I could put a weight or something down here to hold it. But so far, this is heavy enough that we've gotten some pretty good breezes. It's fine. It, it doesn't need anything. The back screen, we did it the same way. I used a screen that I purchased and just modified it by putting it under the gaskets. Uh, it's a magnetic screen, so it opens like that and then closes on its own. The bottom is held on with magnets. And up here, I had to modify it by cutting this rectangle out here. And I basically put a hem around all the edges of the rectangle and Velcro. And then magnets are on this flap here. And so it pulls like this. And that is so that I don't have to take the screen down if the doors need to be closed very quick. Because here in Florida, we'll get a rain. It'll last maybe 10 minutes. It'll just be some quick downpour. And that way I can just close the doors, wait for it to be over with, and then open them back up without having to mess with the screen at all. Um, this will go back up and it's done. The magnets are sewed into this. This will actually come completely off as well. I have the Velcro on the bottom. I don't, most of the time I'll just leave it, leave the flap hanging down for, for ease and it doesn't get lost that way. But I'm real happy with how that turned out. It's going to work out well, I think. So this is my bathroom drawer. I found this urine bottle online and this is what I'll be using for my urine. It's got a wide mouth on it and it extends if I have to go several times and don't have a place to empty it. And that'll store in here. There's room here for a number of other bathroom items. There's toilet paper. These are extra bags. Uh, I'll get it all worked out, but as you can see, there's, there's plenty of storage room in there. I got the collapsible toilet seat, and I'll show you how that works. So basically, if I had to go to the bathroom, I can pull this out like this on it. It opens up. There's a bottom here. Slides inside. Then I take a bag, stretch it over. And these are those biodegradable bags. Put the lid on. Then in here is where I'll store cat litter. Scoop it out put a couple scoops in the bottom, use the bathroom, and then it's easy to put away. I take this off, seal this up, exact opposite of setting it up. I think that's gonna work out well. I'll be able to put some uh, like soaps and a shower bag maybe in here that can go to the showers with me. Some, some these are these are wipes here. I'll have some shower wipes in here, that sort of thing. 
minimal living. <laughs> We're gonna try to do this quick because it's lightning, but we may use some of this bamboo as curtain rods. We're gonna look for a piece that's about a half inch or three quarter inch, see which one works best and see if it flexes too much. This one looks like it could be close to a half inch. got our shower curtain to, to see if it sags at all with the weight. Well, I have a little heavier curtain on here, but these hooks are pretty heavy and I won't have as heavy a, a hook on the curtain that I put in the van. I think this is going to work good. It's strong and all we have to do is replace it if it wears out, cracks or something. And if this doesn't work, we can always purchase a metal rod or something, but this will save us some money and I like knowing it came from our garden. The weather held us back a little bit yesterday, but it gave us time to conceptualize how we're gonna do this back piece. It actually turned out to be pretty simple. It's just a piece of pine that we cut with a template to fit and it's gonna get screwed in along the sides and the top using sheet metal screws. So this balance is ready to go on. I want to show you how it works. Kevin attached these blocks and in this side the rod goes into the hole and over here the hole is partially open so that it kind of snaps in and holds the rod up just like this and this is what you would see from the back so now we're ready to get this one attached and begin work on the other balance so the second balance is done it was designed just like the first one that we showed you and it's going to get hung with screws and you can see here we've pre-drilled. We had to cut it out right in this area here to fit the contour of the van and it's going to attach to this furring strip that runs horizontally here above the door. So we're working on this trim piece next. We want to cover this gap that's back here. As you can see right in there, there's wires and everything showing. Okay, moment of truth. It's pretty good, I think. Yeah, it looks good. Kevin had to do a little bit of sanding. It looks very custom. A lot of sanding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Now we just got to get it painted and put up there. And we'll be done with all the trim. So we finished the trim and both the valances and we've got the cushions cut that go along the back 
We cut three equal cushions. To cut the cushions, we measured out and drew our lines where our cuts needed to go. And then we used an electric bread knife to make our cuts. Most of the time, we're just going to have the one cushion in here like this. Because this is, when I'm traveling solo, this is plenty for me. Um, there'll be pillows along the back, so this can act as both a sofa and a bed. And with the pillows back here, I think it's going to work nice that way. I'll have all this floor to be almost like a little living space. Um, and then there's plenty of room for me. <laughs> so. We still have to get upholstery on the cushions, uh, but this, we had to get them cut for our first overnight, which is going to be next week. Let me show you what else we're doing. Before we could go out on our first overnight, we knew we needed to get some protection on all this raw wood. So I started doing that. And I just used polycrylic, and it's going to take quite a few layers. Uh, but this is enough that at least it'll be protected while we're on our overnight. And we still have magnetic latches that we're going to get on there too. So hopefully we'll be able to take you guys along. Let you know how that goes. Um, that's going to be exciting. So I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please remember give this video a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next video.